Greetings and salutations. Cassandra Xavier here to share with you from my series called Famous People I've Met. So today let's talk about Gene Simmons <laughs> uh, of KISS, the famous rock band KISS. So I was working at a large chain bookstore and I was staffing every one of the things I liked about this bookstore place was first of all it's a bookstore. So I don't have to go too far to really love being in a bookstore. Um, so I was already happy being in a bookstore, but we also had several things that made working go pretty fast. And one of them was we moved uh, positions every two uh, stations rather every two hours. So you weren't spending one day in one the same place all day. You were like two hours here, two hours there, two hours there. Absolutely delightful and brilliant. Whoever thought of that. So I was stationed at the second floor information desk. I'm sorry, history desk. I was at the history desk, which was right at the top of the stairs, um, near all the nonfiction books, including religion, history, and all that stuff. And that's another reason they did that, probably, so that everybody uh, who worked there would become familiar with uh, all of the sections of the store. Oh. <laughs> so I was uh, staffing up there, and this was um, between 1994 and 98. I was working at this place. So uh, I was in my mid-20s, and I was working this desk. So who should come up to me but Gene Simmons. He's tall, wearing all black. His hair looked like finely spun steel wool. Like it looked like a poof of jet, jet, unnaturally black steel wool, but not actual steel wool would look a little bit more coarse than what this was. But this is like a big, maybe cotton candy would be more accurate, but it just didn't look like hair. In retrospect, it probably was hair, just feathered and sprayed to the nine. Not feathered. The thing that they do, where they push, you have the hair going this way, but you push the comb that way to make it puffy. Whatever it was, that's what his hair was doing, and it was just dyed jet black. His, his skin looked really healthy. It, it didn't look like he was tan, uh, but he didn't look super pale either. He had a really good color to his face. And he was with, the, well, he was with a petite white woman who was had hair that was redder than strawberry blonde. Like it wasn't. I guess she's a redhead. Just it was just a very light. Not, it was like copper red, but just not bright. It wasn't bright, but it was definitely in the orange red family, not in the burgundy red family. And um, she was really beautiful. She wasn't wearing a lot of makeup. She was definitely age appropriate. She looked like she was in her 40s. She would hate it if I say that probably, but she looked like, she looked very youthful. Maybe she was 37 or something, but she was wearing a skirt and I think a blazer or something. And, and guess what he wanted? He wanted books about Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's like, where can I find him? So I took him to that section. Because in the uh, history section, we had um, Christianity. We had a subsection of Christianity. No, I'm sorry. In the religion. religion. So, so in religion, there was Christianity. Within the section of the Christianity, there's a whole set section of books solely about Christ. About the Christ, our Lord. And, yeah, so he was interested in that. And I thought that was really interesting. Now, in retrospect, since then, I've learned more about Gene Simmons, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for him and, and his business acumen. Um, I think he has cast me out. I think he is just... Brilliant, and uh, I love you know I love it when people in rock show their brains. 
I love that. Like, I remember when Heath Snyder went to, to uh, court and succeeded, did really, really well against the censorship uh, uh, um, hearings that were going on. When uh, Tipper Gore brought up that whole thing about the bad rapping language. Um, so, yeah, Dee Snyder is, was really intelligent and took care of business. And he went in there dressed like a rock star. He didn't pull his hair back in a ponytail. He was fully Dee Snyder. And he just, he just rocked it in the courtroom. What's hotter than that? We know you can rock it on a stage, but how do you handle it yourself in a courtroom, right? So, uh, yeah, Gene Simmons is brilliant. And I'm not surprised that he was studying Christ because Christ was a figure to uh, note and study. So, yeah, so that's my story about having met Gene Simmons. I remember on his way out, he did a little tacky thing, though. On his way out, he was kind of waving to people. Nobody had kind of really noticed him, but he made it a point to wave at people, and then he specifically said, do you want me to do the Tom thing? <laughs> like nobody had asked him to, but he did. And it was impressive. You know, when he sticks his tongue out and it's like six inches from his nose to the face. Um, yeah, so it was, that was kind of a cute thing that brought him back down from the heavens for me. If he had just, you know, just left, uh, and then we would just be talking about it. You know, Chief Simmons was in here. Um, that would have been better, I think. But, you know, but overall, it was a very special thing to me because um, he's an impressive cat. He's I would have liked to have touched him. <laughs> I would have liked it if he had shaken my hand or given me a hug. Some people you just want to get get close to or get who they, they seem to be impressive, and he's one of those people. He's, uh, he's um, you don't stay on top for decades and decades and decades without having something special about you. And in the IQ department, for sure, he's got something special. And I'm more what they call a sapiosexual, people who get turned on by intelligence. So now I've got a little crush. That is my story of how, how I met, um, what happened when I met Gene Simmons. Hope you liked it. Okay, bye.